So in today's video, we're going to be looking at my 40 gallon breeder freshwater fish tank. This tank has very simple equipment, nothing complex, I don't fertilize it, and it's overstocked. However, this tank has been set for a year and a half now, and is thriving. So to start off with, we're going to talk about the fish. So, this is my red-tailed shark. I have a 125 gallon for him, however he is in here temporarily because he's being a douchebag to my other fish already in the tank. And this is Cheesecake, my tire track eel. I'm planning on putting him into the 125 as well, however for right now, he's just a little baby. So once he gets bigger, I'll stick him in there with the red-tailed shark, fancy goldfish, and bisher. And this red-tailed shark will keep photobombing throughout the video, trust me. And next up, we have this red-tailed tetra, or something of the sort. He is four years old should not be alive and has been in I think three separate tanks now and he was actually the top of the hierarchy for around three months in this tank which is pretty impressive considering at that point he was three and a half years old old fish taking over a whole tank that's impressive next up are my rainbow fish so these guys were actually originally planned to be the top of the hierarchy and I have two different species in here However, they seem to have just meshed in with all the other average fish. They're not particularly high on the hierarchy, and they definitely aren't particularly low. Next, we have my favorite fish, if you can call them that, in this whole tank, and it's this little black snail. Next up are my Zebra Danios. When I say these guys were hard to film, I mean they were hard to film. They kept going in and out of focus and I just couldn't get a clear shot. So this is the absolute best I could do. However, as you can see, this is my massive female being chased around by the males and chasing them back. These guys were also some of the originals, these little red-eyed tetras. However, there's nothing special about them. And this Chinese algae eater went in here because he murdered three other fish. So basically he just went in here where there's too many big fish for him to murder. And he seems to be getting along with everyone just fine nowadays. Next up are these two little long fin black skirt tetras. These guys were accidents and definitely not on purpose, however they fit in just fine. Last, but definitely not least, we have the most abundant fish in this whole tank, black skirt tetras. I got them because they look like very small piranhas, they're very voracious eaters, and they seem to be very happy and healthy in this tank. When I first got them, they were very light, almost see-through, and nowadays, as you can see, they're completely black and not see-through at all. And their stripes are just very beautiful and very prominent. And now for the hardscape. So I have these three really nice pieces of driftwood which I got from my local creek. Next I have three very simple clay pots just for the fish to hide in. And I have this cute little Chinese building that has been completely overtaken by the plants. And of course how could you have a fish tank and not have some big rocks. So I feed mostly bug bites tropical formula, I get a nice healthy pinch of it, and then of course I throw it in there. And this is why I was talking about them being piranhas. I mean, they go wild when I feed them. These guys also get about half a block of bloodworms and brine shrimp from after I get done feeding all of my other fish fresh and salt water. I get to talk about my plants. So these little crypts have never grown well for me. However, in this tank, they are doing wonderful. You can see two very healthy plants here, and then another very healthy plant here. Hey look, he photobombed again. I don't think that the texture of this plant will ever get old. 
Also, this Bacopa, which I've never got to grow well, is doing absolutely wonderful. As you can see, I recently propagated it and it's growing a lot of new shoots. Honestly, if I had to recommend a starter size tank, I would recommend either a 20 long or a 40 gallon breeder because there's so many options to what you can do and put in this tank. And honestly, I have enjoyed it thoroughly through the one and a half years I've had it and can't wait to keep keeping it until it eventually gets reset and turned anew. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and please go check out my Instagram and TikTok for high quality footage and photos.